Shane Long, welcome to AFC Bournemouth. Good to have you on board for the second half of the season. Now, you trained today with the squad for the first time. Just give us your first impressions of what you saw. Yeah, uh, a lot of talent in that dressing room. Um, you know, individually the players are brilliant. Results haven't been going the way they, they want lately, but, uh, you know, hopefully I can come in and try and improve that, give my experience to the lads. And as I said, the talent is there. It's about uh, bringing it onto the pitch and, you know, it's a good group of lads in there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting started and, and uh, play, playing my part. We've seen some footage of training this morning and it looks like Cameron Carter Vickers introduced himself to you. Yeah, yeah, he got my left foot, then he got my right foot and then my left hamstring. But um, strong boy, you know, he uh, wears his heart on his sleeve, you know, so there's nothing wrong with uh, training hard and playing hard as well. So, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just uh, be more careful to, uh, in, the, in the next few sessions. I think just before the transfer deadline, Shane, you were in a hotel in Manchester somewhere pre preparing for Southampton's Premier League game against Manchester United. Just tell us how the move to Bournemouth came about. Yeah, there was um, there was talks for a while, but um, a, a, a few things had to happen for, for me to, to get the chance to come here. And um, I was just about to tuck into some apple crumble when the manager called me over and and said that they're, um, they're going to get Minamino in from Liverpool on loan, which would obviously limit my, my playing time more. So if I still have the opportunity to go out on loan, uh, that I'm, I'm free to do it. So I ran straight out to my room. My agent already knew about it. Uh, he knew about Josh King move as well. And, you know, different things had to happen. So I think it was about 10.58, 10.59, I was signing documents to try and get it over the line before the, before the deadline. And, and, and thankfully, I managed to do it. So, um, you know, I want to get out. I want to play football. I, I want to show what I can do on the pitch. and. Uh, you know, it's it's a good place to come and do that. And I know you're a you're a family man, and you're fairly settled where you live as well. So it must be quite helpful that the move is so close to home as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I've had friends that have played here over the years, and I've just seen a picture of Ian Hart on the wall. Um, Adam Federici here as a keeper as well. I've I've heard good things about the club. You know, I've obviously played against them a lot of times, and when you play against teams, I suppose. You, you know how much you respect them as players as well so I knew what I was coming into I was excited about the challenge and you know there's a strong possibility this team could get promoted this year and I want to be a part of that. We all know how quickly things change in football and you signed when Jason Tinder was obviously the manager and he's since left it's a it's a strange one for you but it's the nature of the game I would imagine. Yeah yeah strange 48 hours um, you know just managing to get over the line chatting to the to the manager um, you know, and then waking up the next morning and, and things have changed again. But I came in and I met uh, Woody and, and, and Perch and, you know, they, they filled me with confidence. You know, it was nice to come into the building and, and feel so wanted and, you know, managed to meet all the lads today training and, and you know, they, they welcomed me with open arms. So it's, um, yeah, it's business as usual, you know, out on the pitch, get results and, and, and try and fly up that league. Exactly. It's it's one of those ones where let things sort themselves out off the pitch and you guys have got to concentrate what goes on on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, we're in good hands, you know. Um, the, the lads that are here have, have been in the game a long time. Um, obviously, it's, it's a shock to the system, but the second you get out on that pitch, you just kind of, everything else goes into the background. You focus on the game and, as I said, we have the talent in the dressing room to, to, to get a few wins on the bounce and, and, and that's what we need. Just ask you if you watched your former club Reading play Bournemouth on Friday night on, on Sky Sports. You're probably rooting for, for Reading that night. Yeah, I have good memories of Reading, all right, yeah, but um, things didn't go to plan for, for Bournemouth. You know, they were 3-0 down and, you know, showed a good reaction getting that goal back. But, uh, you know, it's just a confidence thing at the moment, I suppose. I think everyone knows, as I said, the quality is here. It's just getting that, that confidence back in the squad and, and getting on a run of games. I've, I've played in the Championship before and, you can get three wins in a week, nine points, and you're shooting up the league and things are flipping their heads. So, um, you know, it can, it can all change so quickly. So uh, hopefully my experience will, will, will help the, the club do that. You said about playing in the Championship before. You actually got a winner's medal with Reading 2005-2006. I know only lost two league games that season as well. I know you were still coming through and you were quite young. Just your memories of that season. It was, yeah, it was incredible. Um, I think we set a record for the amount of points. It was 106 points or something, but, you know, we were written off at the start of the season. We actually lost the first game of the season that year. I was in the academy and broke into the first team around the December time. Um, scored on my away debut and just kind of, yeah, was an impact player off the bench. You know, still still very raw, but willing to do whatever it took to, to help the team. And, you know, it was a great set of players. 
great memories and uh, you know I've experienced that, that promotion feeling once and uh, I'd like to experience it again. I'm sure you've been all consumed with the Premier League this season, just turning our attentions to the Championship, highly competitive, always a dramatic division. What have you made of the league this season? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a strange league because anybody can beat anybody. You know, um, there's no favourites. You know, you need to be on your game week in, week out. And as I said, you can get three wins on the bounce in a week, but also a bad loss can just lead into a loss and all of a sudden you're, you're, you're lacking confidence. So, um, yeah, it's just about the lads sticking together, you know, doing what they can do on the pitch to get them wins and you know, the table will take care of itself. It's at, uh, there's about, I'd say, a good 15 teams that are probably pushing to get out of the league, still think they have a chance and everybody's fighting, fighting for their lives, so it, it's, it's not going to be easy. Now we're nine points behind an automatic promotion place, 13 behind the leaders with 19 games remaining. Bournemouth fans are obviously hoping that we can bridge the gap. What do you think it's going to take to do that, Shane? Um, I just that confidence, I think. Um, a bit of luck, obviously, always helps. But um, just getting that camaraderie on the pitch again, getting that winning feeling back, uh, that confidence back into the players. Because, as I said, I've seen it in training. I've, I've known before I come here, I've checked the players that, w that were still at the club. And individually, there's top quality in there. So. Um, yeah, it's just gelling as a group, uh, playing together as a team and, and going out the results and, and uh, yeah, let the table look after itself. You have a reputation for a tremendous work ethic. Where does that come from? Um, I don't know. I think I played a, a lot of sports when I, was a, when I was a youngster back in Ireland, hurling Gaelic football, and it's, it's um, all about playing for your local team. There's no, um, there's no more uh, reward than just honour, you know, so um, I think that's bred into me. Um, Obviously, that scare of maybe going to lower clubs and, and my career going downhill obviously reinforced that and I need to work hard to, to earn my position because I didn't have the schooling, I suppose, that a lot of the players have in England. Um, when I was 16, I, I was still playing hurling, you know, and then all of a sudden, a year and a half later, I was at a, a championship club in, in Reading playing professional football. So it, I was a bit behind, I suppose, and it, it took a lot of hard work to, to get up to, to the terms of the, the players around me. but. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll always say to any player, work hard in training and training and, and you'll reap your rewards. I don't think you took up football until you were around 12 and I think your strengths, it was in hurling, that set you aside from, from other young footballers. And I know that scouting networks, because of Jamie Vardy's success and his route through, they were sort of looking for people who come through other routes rather than just the academy. Is that is that how you, you, you saw it panning out? Well, at the time, I was um, hurling was probably my number one sport. Um, I, I dreamt of playing for my county, um, and then at 16, I got the chance to to go on trial for Cork City, um, and I was still playing hurling at the time. Uh, it was actually a weird one. My manager said to me, "If, they, if the the county team doesn't make it through, we were favourites to win the All Ireland. If they don't make it through, then you have to go up to hurling and concentrate on football." And uh, I was sure we were going to win, so I agreed. But they, they lost the game and that was it. Uh, I kept my promise, focused on, on the football and um, yeah, very thankful that I did. That wasn't long ago, Shane, that you were being talked about as one of the most sought-after strikers in Europe, but you've, you stayed loyal with Southampton. You ever sort of tempted to have... I mean, you were linked with Juventus and Tottenham and teams like that. Were you ever tempted? Uh, no. Uh, I... I I really enjoyed my time at Southampton. Um, you know, it's a really, really good club, really well-run club. Um, I think I respect them as much as they respect me. You know, it, it's um, it's somewhere that really progressed my career. Uh, had a lot of fond memories there, and you know, obviously playing time was wasn't really there this season for me. Uh, with the new signs that came in, I think it was good for me in my career to to get out and play some games, and I'm very thankful that I've, I've come to it. I set up like I have in, in Bournemouth and, and and help as much as I can and yeah, who knows what the future holds but um, you know, nothing but fond memories of my time at Southampton. Is there a career in singing perhaps after you finish playing? Uh, probably not. No, um, I do like, I, I like my music, I, I play guitar. It's a, it's a way of forgetting about life for a while I think, uh, just playing music and, and singing songs and you know, if, if we get promoted uh, you might see me on stage and you might not be able to pull the mic off me. What about an initiation song? I know that this is something that footballers, they got this ritual. Have you got one lined up or what was your one at Southampton, if you can remember that? 
You know, if you ask me to sing a song in front of friends and family, no problem. But an initiation song, for some reason, the, the nerves kick in, you start sweating. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's all strange faces in front of you and it's, it's, uh, it's a first impression goes a long way. So um, I don't have one in mind yet, but uh, when the time comes, I'll, just, I'll probably just stick to, to what I know so I don't forget the words. Now you're in your seventh season with Southampton and you've probably been asked this many times before, but have you got any thoughts about what you might do when you're not, not a footballer? Um, no, not yet. Um, people keep telling me you need to plan for the end, but you know, I am 34 now, but I, I, I don't feel like I am that age. You know, I feel like I, I still have a, a, a lot to give. Um, still got my pace and, you know, touch wood, injury wise, I've been okay. So yeah, I'm just focusing on football. Uh, the last 12 months probably I haven't played as much as I want so the legs are fresh so um, yeah I want to do all I can for this club and you know play as many games between now and the end of the season. And Bournemouth fans are hurting a little bit at the moment after four straight defeats. Shane just give them a, a message from you if you would. We're going to win on Saturday. Um, it all starts on Saturday. You can only take it one game at, game at a time and you know full respect to Birmingham they're a good side but uh, I have full confidence in, in the lads and the managing staff here that we can we can produce that win and, and go on a run. And if you get the nod to start, any chance of you improving on that record of 7.69 seconds for the opening goal? <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, I, I'll take one going in off my nose uh, at any stage in the game. But, you know, um, as long as we win, that's all that matters. Three points is massive to, to keep climbing up that table and, and keep the, the teams below us, keep them down there.